We're going to start by assuming that you have a functioning instance of DOSBox on your PC. And we're going to grab the other two programs that we need in order to make this work. We're going to start by getting Borland C++ version 3.0. And we can get that at winworldpc.com slash product slash Borland hyphen C slash 3.0. And we're going to come down to downloads, and we're going to grab this first item in the list, which is Borland CPP 3.0. It's a, a almost 10 megabyte download, and it should only take a few seconds. We're going to grab it from the US uh, mirror. There we go. And now we're going to need an editor in order to make things work for us. And DOSBox does not come with the DOS editor included. The DOS editor will be fine for our needs, and so we're just going to get that. And so we can find a, a version of the DOS editor here at ibiblio.org slash pub slash micro slash pc hyphen stuff slash free DOS slash files slash DOS slash edit. And we're going to get uh, this version here, edit 09ax.zip. And there we are. Now we'll need to extract our files. The edit file is just a simple zip file, so we'll extract that this way. And the Borland file is a 7z file, so we'll use 7z to extract those. And now we need to move the files that we are going to be using in DOSBox into a folder that is accessible from DOSBox. So we'll start um, by looking at that folder. I've put the folder here on right on the C drive, on the, on the root directory of the C drive. And I've called that folder my DOS. You see, at the moment, it has nothing in it. So we're going to go back to Downloads. First, let's move the editor file over there. And so from there, we'll just open up bin and choose um, edit.exe. And we're going to copy that. Gonna copy that. And then we're going to put that um, down into, uh, into my DOS on the C drive. Paste that right in there. Then we're going to go uh, and get the Borland files here in the downloads. You'll see that in this Borland directory, there are eight disk images, and those are what we need to copy over. So we'll um, select those eight images and copy, and we'll bring that down and also put that in the MyDOS folder. The next step in our task, task takes place inside of DOSBox itself. So having opened DOSBox, we'll now mount the C drive like this. And we called that folder my DOS. Now let's look at what's on the C drive by doing C colon. And we'll do a directory. And there we see the disk images that we moved over, and we see our binary for the edit function. We're going to create a, an install folder here on the C drive. So we're just going to do make dir, and we're going to call that install folder just B-O-R-I-N-S-T for Borland install. Now we need to mount each of these images and move the the files that are on them into that install directory. So we use the image mount command, and it goes like this, I-M-G-M-O-U-N-T. And we're going to mount it to uh, logical drive A. So we put A. And then we put the name of the disk image we're mounting. So the first one is disk01.img. And now this is a type floppy image, so we do minus T 
floppy. And now we see we have an A drive that has the contents of that first disk image on it. We're going to go back to C and we're going to copy those files into the bore inst directory. So copy a colon star dot star space b o r i n s t. Now we want to unmount that image because we need to mount up the next one. So we again do i m g m o u n t minus u for unmount and then a and we've unmounted that disk. Now we can just use the up arrows to repeat that eight times. We're going to mount uh, now disk image two. We're going to copy, and we're going to unmount. Then we're going to do the same thing for disk image three. Copy, and unmount. Disk image four. Copy, unmount. Disk image five. Copy, unmount. Disk image six. Copy, unmount. Disk image seven. Copy. Unmount. And finally, disk image eight. Copy. Unmount. Now we're going to run the Borland installer. And so we're going to move to um, the directory bor install, B E O R I N S T. And the install program that should now be in this directory is simply called install. So we'll just run install. And here we are at the installation. We're going to hit um, enter to continue here. Now here, the source drive is not going to be A. We're going to be using C itself as the source drive. So we change this to C. And that is the correct source path for inst. Now I'm going to make one change to these options, and that is that uh, we're not going to be using Windows at all in this uh, these projects. We're going to be using entirely DOS, so we're not going to bother to uh, to install any of the Windows capabilities. So uh, under each of these, uh, we're going to deselect them by uh, by just hitting Enter when we come to each of the options, and we can leave this the same because it's not going to change anything and just hit escape from here. You see now we've deselected the Windows options. Now we come down to start installation. And this will take a little bit, so here I'm going to pause the video. So here we are at the end of the install and we see some recommendations for modifying the path. We'll work on that in just a moment. Um, but we're just going to hit a key here to move on from uh, from this and we get to the um, we get to the Borland readme file. Um, you can certainly take a look at this. Uh, there are some good manuals available for Borland C online. I'll put some links to those in the comments. And uh, but we're just going to escape out of this readme file right now. And now we take a little look at the directory and we see that whoops. We're going to go up um, to the C directory, and we take a look here, and we see that a new directory called uh, Borland uh, C has been established for us here. And so we need now to um, to make some adjustments to the uh, to the path file. The easiest way for us to do that is going to be to make just a little batch file that we can run here. So we're going to type edit, and I'm going to call my batch file my bat dot bat. And it's just, just going to be a simple file that resets the path. So it's going to say path. Sorry, it's going to say set path equals. And then it's going to say C. 
um, colon backslash because we want uh, the root directory to be in the um, in the search path. And then the other uh, directory that we're interested in being sure makes it into the search path is C colon backslash Borlin C slash bin. And then we're just going to save that and exit out. And we're going to uh, we're going to run that uh, that batch file. And we'll have to run that batch file each time we start up DOSBox. You can see here it set the um, the path for us. Let's take a look at that uh, that directory, that Borland C directory. So we'll go into it, uh, 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 Borland C, and we'll see that uh, as we look at that directory structure, that we have a directory in there called bin, and we go into bin, and we're going to look at the executable files in that directory, and we're going to use the the wide um, uh, option for directory, so we can see all of them here. And we'll see that we have a, a executable, executable here called BC. That actually starts up the development environment, the IDE for uh, Borland C. We'll look at that, although uh, I find that a bit tedious. We're not going to use that too much. Uh, then uh, BCC is the, um, is the compiler, and, uh, and it, can, uh, it will um, compile and link our um, our uh, our C files, our CPP files, and then we see that we have TASM in here. We're going to bring a lot with TASM along the way, and uh, and we have T-Link is here, and uh, and then TD the uh, the debugger is here too. Those are um, those are all good programs that will be very helpful for us as we go along the way. So for right now, we're just going to get out of this. And we're going to be sure that that path statement worked just by typing BCC uh, to invoke the compiler. And we see that it did, in fact, uh, invoke the compiler. It gave us a, us a usage statement. So uh, we will know that uh, we actually have made a good connection to that compiler. As a final step in this little tutorial, we're going to write a quick Hello World program. So we're going to start by invoking the editor, and we're going to edit, edit a file that we are going to call hello.cpp. Hello.cpp. And we do the, uh, the standard include um, here at the, at the top of the file. We're going to include um, stud.io.h. And we're just going to make the simplest of programs here, int main. And uh, then we're going to, um, oh, I know what we want to do here. We need to we need to change the, the tab, because note, when I hit tab here now, it's going over eight spaces. And that's, that's way too many for us here. I'd much rather work with four spaces. So we're going to do Alt-O and choose the options, and come to tabs. And we're going to choose tab size four. And then Alt O again, we're going to save those options. So whenever we open up Edit, it will choose a tab size of four for us. So now we tab over and we go over four, and that's just right. So printf hello world and backslash n to get a new line. Close with a uh, with a semicolon. And then since we chose int main, we're going to do uh, return zero. We'll close off that bracket, and we're going to uh, save and exit. Now we're going to type bc. We're going to invoke the compiler. So bcc hello.cpp should compile the program for us. And we see that, in fact, now we have an executable file called hello.exe. And let's invoke that. Hello. Now, um, this root directory is going to get very crowded if we don't organize it a little bit. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to create a, um, a directory to store our code in. So we're going to do make dir. And I'm going to just call that my code to start. And we're going to uh, 
move all of the um, the hello uh, uh, programs that we have into that um, that make into that my code directory. So we're going to rename um, hello dot cpp of my code hello dot cpp and we're going to do the same for the dot exe file and we can get rid of the the objective file the object file And now we uh, we've moved hello into the into the my code directory. Uh, we're going to want to eventually get rid of this bore inst directory as well as all of the image files. So uh, what you can do is you can just go into the my dos directory in uh, that you connected uh, to dosbox, and you can just delete those there. That's actually the easiest way of deleting these image files and this and this bore inst directory, which is rather large. So we will um, I hope that you enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you and God bless you.